All right, we are continuing to work with our poster design. And this is where we've come so far after the weekend. So we did a text blocking sketch. We refined our text blocking sketch, maybe tried a few different things, and then decided on the placement and the, the personality of the type. Then we went to defont.com, tried out some different typefaces, and then modified the type to fit into our design. And then, once we did that, we brought it into Illustrator to live trace it into its own vector. And what I did is, in order to play with the top text separate from the bottom text, I made each of these a separate EPS. So let me open that up. Down to my assignment six folder. And look for my PSD. So all the purples, these are my EPSs. These are the things I want you to have in your poster design. It will give you the most versatility. I have the line art for my spot illustration. I have black text as an EPS. Again, an EPS file is a portable vector file, which means no matter how much you zoom in, there will never be pixels. It can be scaled up. I have the bottom text. And just like digital coloring, I can play with that once it's in the poster in a raster program, but I always want to have the smart objects. And let's see, where is my green? There it is, my Photoshop file. So this is what I had so far. I'm thinking of not only where the type goes, where the line art goes, but what the background is as well. And I need to bring in the EPS file for the type, top and bottom. So I'm just going to show this to you again. First EPS. Because you can keep tweaking and making new decisions as you go. And then the bottom EPS. Because as vector files, I can resize this and play with this any way I want. And you see, because I brought them into an existing Photoshop file, that existing Photoshop file is 350 pixels per inch. The size should be, I mean, minimum 8 by 10, but hopefully for our poster, more like 11 by 14. Mine's more like uh, 12 by 17. All that's good. Now, this was the layout of my blocking sketch, right, where I actually had the day of the behind this text and the dead behind the illustration. I can match that if I want. Take this down to a low opacity. Lock it. And then I can take all of these smart objects and I can make them match. Not that one though. So I can make the dead a little bit bigger because it's a smart object. I'm able to do that. It will kind of lock into place a little bit. You'll see all those purple guidelines. But I can also stretch it if I feel that's needed. And the vector will stretch as perfectly as possible to raster into this format. So then day, command T. All those compositing skills, just place that in. And then the line art and the coloring, I'll link both of them by holding down shift, then transform.
But this is just to show you how versatile this kind of layout should be. Right. And then I might even transform my illustration to go with the text a little bit, maybe tilt it a little bit. Then maybe take the type. This is all just the layout. Oh, not that one. Maybe tilt the type a little bit. So it's readable, but also kind of engaged with the artwork. And then I think I want to move that behind. So I'll turn off my guideline now. Now the text is behind the spot illustration. Maybe I'll play with moving it a little bit more. Just use my arrow keys. I like that. Readability is important. Also trying to avoid something called tangencies. So the T is really close to that. If it was touching, that becomes kind of uncomfortable. So you want to avoid uncomfortable touching. I always say it's like that uncle at the family reunion, right? You know what uncomfortable touching is. So you want to avoid that. And you want to avoid that with your different design elements. I say such disturbing things so that you remember them. So day of the, now there's tangencies that are intentional, that kind of bring your attention to them like the A and that little spark, right? Then there are tangencies that are avoided, like the T not overlapping with the, the frayed L there. And then there's tangencies where you can, you can force the overlap, like the E is readable as an E, even though it looks like an F, because it's completely covered up. All right. Now, same thing with dead. How can I make that work? Bring it down underneath the illustrations. And that's pretty readable, but maybe I'll fiddle with it a little bit. I think that works pretty well. I can stretch it or enlarge it. If I want to enlarge it from the center. I can use option, same with shrinking. And then if I want in Photoshop to distort it, I just hold down shift. Maybe I'll stretch it out a little bit horizontally. Play with its tilt. I'm worried about that tangency and that tangency. So I'm just trying to adjust it. I want that one not to touch and I want that one to maybe overlap a little bit more. There. So it feels intentional. Okay. Now I might take all of that, now that I have my text and my image, and I might put them all into a group together into a folder so that I can move them all together without having to select each one. So now they're all locked together even though they're independent. Great. So the next thing that's required for the project is doing color type, right? Because we're doing our black type, our colored type, and then our full poster. But you have to keep your images in mind. So I have the blocking sketch, I have the black type, if I want to save the black type again, because I've I've now pushed it behind the illustration, you know, and have set it a little bit more intentionally. And usually what I'll do for that is I will turn off the color. And then I'll just do a screen grab. So you can see the full poster layout. And you know what? While I'm at it, 
we can always adjust the background as well. So I'm going to take this gray, Command T, hold down Option, and I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Because this is, these are the only two elements I need in my poster. I don't need to fit a lot of extra information. I might even decide to shrink it dramatically like this so that the text breaks free from the background. These are all options and I can make that rectangle any size I want. But I don't know that that's the most interesting. So I think about there works. Yeah, let's do that. And then if I want to shrink the white, I use the crop tool. And same thing, hold down option. Or you can adjust the sides independently. But I tend to like to have the same white space on the top and sides and then a little extra just on the bottom for my poster designs. And then I'll check my image size again, just make sure it's still above 11 by 14 by 350. And that's great. So let me save this as a screen grab, because this is my updated text. Oh, but I need my color on top. Right? Or I can even just turn off the illustration. because you want just the text to be an interesting composition as well. And I do it so I screen grab also a little bit of the black background of Photoshop so you can see the intentional border. If you hit function key and F11, you'll, you'll get to see you know, what you've done. All right, so now, just like we did with our logo design, we are going to play with color versions of this text. And to do that, I'm going to make a duplicate of that text. So I have the top text here, I'm going to mark it as green. The bottom text here, I'm going to mark it as blue. Make duplicates of both of them. Command J, this will be red and Command J, this will be orange. These will be my color versions. Just to color, I just double click and I'm going to play with the layer styles on them. Easiest is just color overlay. I can change to any color I want. I can even steal a color from my spot illustration. These are just flat, full colors at 100%. Just do that for now. Now let's do it to the top text. Say OK. Double click here, color overlay, let's pick a different color. This is another reason to have them as separate, separate EPS files, so I can color them individually and do different effects. Okay, so that's pretty basic. I don't know if that's the most interesting. Remember, we can also do effects like a stroke and depending on my background color, I might want a dark stroke around it, and I might want that on the outside, or maybe on the center, so it grows kind of like a stroke grows in Illustrator, both inside the shape and outside of the shape, and that helps it stand out for sure. But if I have a dark background, maybe I want a white stroke around it. So before I go too much further, let's start playing with the background. And that's outside of this folder. This is the gray. So first I'm going to use my rulers, Command R if you don't see them. And you want them to be in inches. So to change that, you can go to Photoshop Preferences, Units and Rulers. You should only have to do this once. Change the rulers to inches and say OK. And I'm going to bring down with my move tool guides around my gray background. Right. Now I'm going to duplicate that gray background. 
Command J. I'm going to make it normal.